Hello and welcome back to another Josh and Eliza on Fridays. <laughs> we are excited to talk about a topic today that is um, exciting. It is contemporary. It is even perhaps a little tacit. You may not hear people discuss it or even be aware that it's something that they do. What are we going to talk about today, Josh? Well, what we do or do not do with final plosive consonants, very specifically final plosives. Mm -hmm. And if you were to rewind the video a little, you might hear it happen. Beautiful. In it in the word IT. Um, and uh, a quick definition for those of you who are hearing the words plosive for the first time. Uh, plosive it refers to the action uh, that the vocal tract is making. So essentially what's happening is some part of your body is getting in the way of the air. It's sealing off your airway. It lets the air pressure build and then that air explodes, creating an audible result. Now we're talking about uh, a couple of plosives, which we'll make for you now. The first one being a bilabial, uh, an unvoiced bilabial plosive, p uh, a voiced bilabial plosive, b a an unvoiced alveolar plosive, a voiced alveolar plosive. <laughs> uh, and uh, and then two more, an unvoiced velar plosive and a, excuse me, and a voiced velar plosive. Le. 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 Yeah, yours is better. Mine went, mine went a little uvular there. But that's, that's also a fun sound. Le. Le. <laughs> So the, the, the six sounds you just heard us make are the plosives uh, found in the American accent of English um, mm -hmm. with, the, uh, with the addition of the next thing that we're gonna talk about, which is something called a glottal plosive. Yes. Which in English, and I'm going to use the broad umbrella, doesn't have a letter in the alphabet on its own, but we use it all the time and put it on these other six letters sometimes. I think perhaps most commonly or audibly on, t on the letter T. Mm -hmm. So it or it, right. but it can happen on, on all of them. Yeah. I want to come back to what you just said, but I want to come back to what you just said, though. <laughs> I got excited. I felt like I <laughs> mushed all my words together. Um, when you say it's not linked to a particular spelling, and that yes. we all know that English is not a perfect match spelling to pronunciation, but the sounds we just made p, often linked with a p spelling, b mm -hmm. often linked with a b spelling, t often linked with a t. Uh, d, often linked with a D, k, often linked with a C or a K, and mm -hmm. g, often linked with a G spelling g. or some sort of G combo. Um, mm -hmm. So, what does a, a <laughs> it, it has no spelling equivalent. I mean, so in that way, a lot of times when speakers use it, they don't even realize that they are using a brand new sound to mean one of the spellings that I just described. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, not, not that we're talking about it today, but I hear in this American accent of English, I hear this glottal stop often before vowels begin, words <laughs> that begin with vowels. Often. Yes, yes. And that's another place we, we use it where it's, it wouldn't be spelled, but an American reading a passage would put that sound in quite a bit. 
I often use the glottal sound when I read aloud, yeah. you know? Yes. So it's, it's, I dropped it in quite a bit um, before those vowel words. I could have also said it on the word aloud at the end without fully releasing the duh, right? Mm -hmm. I often use the glottal sound when I read aloud. Right? Would, you, would you do that one more time for us without the glottal sound in there so we can compare? Yes, in my own accent, <laughs> because <laughs> because when I take the glottal, here's the thing about um, our work. <laughs> this might not happen for you, but I, so I'll speak for myself. But when I take away that glottal sound, when we teach actors, we call it um, easy onset. So the vocal folds aren't doing that explosion. And it makes me want to switch my accent to an accent that does that fairly naturally. So. This is going to take a little bit of negotiation. I often use the glottal sound when I read aloud. When I read aloud. See, I even, I dropped it in a little at the end. Let me do it again. I often use a glottal sound when I read aloud. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. And so for all of you listening who are thinking, perhaps I don't hear a difference or it, it's just silence. Maybe it's, you know, your, your brain is searching for a way to classify this aloud versus aloud. Mm -hmm. You can perhaps focus instead on how it feels and the mechanics because it will feel more different, I think, than it will sound. So the glottal stop is the bringing together of your vocal folds. <laughs> Notice that I'm, I can't describe that without, without doing it. Yeah. So you have two tendons here in your voice box or your larynx, they come together, those vocal folds, they stop the air and it creates the sound of aloud, aloud. Mm -hmm. You can hear it more clearly if it's between two vowels though. So for example, in between the vowels in uh-oh. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite example. Yes. Because it sounds funny if we just say, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it sounds so silly. Oh, I spilled my water. But uh oh, uh oh. Um, and I have um, young nieces and nephews and that's like often a sound that they learn very, very young when like there's an oopsie like, uh oh. And they learn that, that combination of vowels but they learn the glottal stop um to demonstrate oops I spilled something uh-oh <laughs> and if I were to say oh oh they wouldn't understand what I was doing mm -hmm. they would they would hear oh oh right mm -hmm. so the chances are this is a sound you already know how to make but you're mm -hmm. perhaps not consciously using it um but you can we're going to show you some examples in the American accent of English where you can use this glottal stop. The first, I think, and like you mentioned, the most sort of broadly applied substitution is for final t sounds. Yeah. So if the word is what or it or even C-A-N-T can't, a lot of speakers will substitute a stop to the air here in their larynx and everybody else goes yep yeah, yep yeah. that was a t got it yep yeah. got it um i think my favorite is my favorite word to use this on is what <laughs> it's such a good one what <laughs> could you just let your mouth hang you said what <laughs> and it's even better if you let your tongue just kind of hang a little bit <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> it's so good it's so descriptive it's like so effectively descriptive absolutely it's really now good. it could be that you see that perhaps perhaps you see this applied more in words where the vowel right before the t gets made with the back of the tongue either arching or cupping um mm -hmm. shoot or um oh, that's hot yeah, um yeah because the tongue is already sort of like, the front of the mouth just doesn't have to get involved. So exactly. there's less. Change. It's just like, 
<laughs> that's my rationale. That's not hard science. That's just something that feels true to me. It feels good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't it great? We're, we're supposed to be on here with sort of like <laughs> reliable <laughs> <laughs> techniques and, and, and science. And we're like, this feels true. Um, what's, what's, what's your favorite uh, example of this? Oh, uh, using the, the final T? Um, mm -hmm. Well, the, the word what is a good one. I, I tend to use it a lot on the word like um, went. I went because often the word to follows it. And so I went to the store. I went to the store and there's just this, it's so quick that when I say I went to the store, you probably don't hear it as good as when I say it, uh, just the word went, went. But I, I can feel myself doing it in the sentence. I went to the store and it's just this little extra um, that kind of reinforces the following T. Mm -hmm. I think that NT spellings are particularly uh, ripe for this. I, I hear it a lot, like didn't. Yeah, uh, that one, you did it. You did it <laughs> twice. <laughs> did twice. I think didn't. that uh, di didn't. Di didn't. Yeah, if you I say did, it, yeah. I think I use my tongue tip. I for that middle D and that's did didn't did didn't. But it's possible to do two glottal stops. Did and did and. You can um, even make. I feel like you can even make a little contact with your tongue and do two glottals too. Didn't. Yeah. Didn't. Didn't. Did. <laughs> That's true. Did, I'm, I'm, did, it's a poor articulation, right? My tongue is coming yeah. up. Did, yeah. but I'm still sealing up. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Even when I think I'm making a duh, <laughs> I'm making a glottal stop. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're going to move on from final T's to something that, beautiful segue, final D spellings. Yeah. So these are these are also ripe. You you hear this substitution all the time. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, let's see. Uh, my father but, is my dad. My dad. My dad. My dad. Um, the word that came to my mind was it rhymes with that. Actually, is the word had. Um, I had, had, I had one. Even if I do like that short phrase, I'm I'm really um, glottal kind of. Yeah, had. I don't want to use the word attack, but I'm I'm really glottaling, glottaling. that um, that uh, D. I had one. Yeah, and it's so it's so kind of it's such a uh, the word I'm looking for is layer of communication mm -hmm. when you start to use this completely unacknowledged sound <laughs> mm -hmm. with other native speakers you will bring in a layer of sound that they register even if they yes, don't yes. know and they'll and you'll get different responses right you will be bringing to them an extra layer of communication that will make them understand and you'll get Really, I think you'll get favorable results. Um, yeah. But uh, we 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 must be completely transparent. If you are a user of the Bold Voice app, which you should be, um, when you're practicing your pronunciation, you do need to uh, release final consonants with p yeah. and, and that. Yeah. The, the AI requires. The, yeah, the AI won't. Um, won't recognize the glottal um, final sound. And I, I um, just to humor the dialectician in me, the, the thing that we're talking about with this glottal sound is very specifically on final plosive consonants. There are other dialects of English that use this sound in a different place or different places. Um, where Americans will do something else. So the word water, for example, we 
use that tapping sound, water. It would sound weird to an American to say water, water, but maybe not to somebody from London, right? Water. So just to point it out, um, because you are uh, lovely listeners and watchers because um, uh, there are both of you. So you might be familiar with other, other accents and have that reference point. So I wanted to drop that little knowledge tidbit in. Um, this, this on final plosives really does m make an American English accent, I think. I agreed, agreed. But that is a very good uh, parallel. Um, as, as long as we are uh, moving forward, um, can we talk about uh, final bilabial plosives? Stop. I love nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. Uh, 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 Glottal stop right there on stop. Yeah, stop. Um, so I still hear the letter P, but we're not getting. And if you do this, you should feel that puff of air. Um, so it's impossible to do a glottal stop on a P or a B or a T or a D or a K or a G when it starts the syllable. Plosive, I can't, right? I can't actually substitute this in, in that position because I need that extra explosion <laughs> when these sounds start the syllable, but when they're at the end, stop. Yeah, stop. And, and, you, and you'll, you can see as Josh does that, that their lips are coming together, so there is a co-articulation happening. There's the beginning of a p that's unreleased, but simultaneously the vocal folds are coming together. And if that if we didn't have the vocal folds coming together, it would sound like stop, stop. <laughs> and for some reason, to to a native speaker of uh, English, that sounds very odd. There's yeah. something missing there. Stop. You're like. What? what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I said stop, and I brought my vocal folds together, then then there's something there that that registers in the ear of my listener as a P. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shall we talk about its voiced counterpart with my favorite word? <laughs> you can you can give us another favorite word. It's okay. Um, babe, which can be shortened just to bay, but it's also Babe, babe, yeah, babe, babe. <laughs> well, that's a great example. That's how you know this this stop has power as a consonant because it's not bay. That's right. a whole other word. That's a whole other word, babe. Mm -hmm. babe. And if I fully release it, babe, babe. Then, then it actually gets interpreted slightly differently. Um, of course, depending on the the vocal quality behind it too. But the fully, when I hear the fully released version coming at me, babe, it's like, oh, cool. right, babe, feels uh, a little bit more casual or less formal, or you know. That's my, this, I love that detail. The fact that these sort of like unreleased final plosives paired with glottal stops, this has become so normalized within the culture that it's a marker of something specific if it gets released. So if I right. say stop, then I just mean cut it out. But if I yeah, say yeah. stop, you're like, oh, what's going on? It's, there is a... Uh, <laughs> It betrays right. your feeling. Right. Right. Like just with this word, right. If I say right, right. Oh. It's like, oh. Right. Then I've done something to upset you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but if I go, oh, right, right. 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 Then it's then it's just the kind of everyday usage and it's not not clocked, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but right is a little jarring. Um, <laughs> um, let's come to our final two plosives. Let's come to- Yes. 
and good. Yeah. Um, this, these, I think, for me, in my experience, these are the ones that I hear the most often. So the these getting replaced by glottal stops is still in process for me, at least in my speech. Yeah, I I think for me, probably the the unvoiced one the k is still is still very much a k. Mm -hmm. I I tend to like my dog. I tend to glottal the g sometimes, but but k final k c sounds I I still pretty much fully release. I think mm. um, check the clock because there's something about um what's going on back there you know that that i i need to feel the the tongue this is my tongue <laughs> i need to feel my tongue moving away you know at the back of my tongue moving away from the roof of my mouth um whereas with stop or write there's there's space back there so i feel like i can breathe that's what it is <laughs> if i do it on a k sound for some reason it like yeah. Um, starts to mess with my brain, but I can do it on dog. Mm -hmm. I have to go walk. I have to go walk my dog. What if you had to walk your dog? I could walk my walk. I could walk my dog, but it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as it's not as comfortable. It hurts my soul. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I agree. I agree. For me, it is still happening. That doesn't mean I don't. I hear it. I hear it everywhere. Yeah. I hear so, it a lot. I uh, hear it a lot. I hear it a lot. Yeah. Um, and I would invite uh, our watchers to sort of be on the lookout for it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you, I, I hear it the most often in curse words and swear words. And there are quite a few. Yes, that have been... yes there are. So just... Be and... <laughs> Also, nice release if you're utilizing those words to fully release them too. You know, it it has a different sensation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, it hits different as the. It does. Say. Um, but I, I'll give you an example. Uh, I could say "What the heck?" Mm -hmm. What the heck? Or I could say "What the heck?" <laughs> <laughs> I have a, a sibling who does that a lot. What the heck? Um, not that phrase, but on that um, kind of final K sound. It, what the heck? That that kind of. Do you know what I mean? That kind of like heck. <laughs> it it it, it um, always makes me giggle anytime he does it. Um, it yes, yes I, that's he, do, he he does it on that the word that I'm thinking of that is his favorite. This is uh, one that I will not mention. Um, uh, <laughs> There's a very common one that ends with cut. Um, and so it, it you just always hear the first two sounds <laughs> followed by a glottal stop. And <laughs> yes, exactly. You're I was like, <laughs> you, you almost did it. Yes. We're good. We're good. We're good. Um, we're good. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. You know, there's a character, Huck Finn. Huff uh, Finn's first name rhymes with my sibling's favorite swear. And so, Huff, 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 Huff. right, is something that I would hear him do, do a lot. Yeah, no, um, that's okay. Yeah. Oh, but you, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. You know where I hear it, though? I, I just, it just popped into my mind. I was like, do we only, do I only really use it in curse words? Um, work. 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 I got to work. Yeah, so. I have a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a word that I will a word <laughs> that I will do that on the final K. Um, interesting, interesting. Well, our our beautiful watchers, um, now that you've gotten to experience it and hear it over and over again, I promise you, put your radar out for it. It'll be mm -hmm. all over the place. Um, it's Art. everywhere 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 <laughs> um and uh in the comments let us know where and when you heard it um point us in the direction of what videos we should do next 
And as always, uh, parting words of wisdom, Josh? A little bit of practice every day goes a long way. Just a little bit. 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 Just a little bit. Yep. yep. All right, put the work in and we will see you all next Friday. Next Friday, bye.